Dyers. Uh, there are some three, four chairs vacant here. There are ladies in the back. I request you to feel comfortable. You can come in front, please. Uh, at least four I can count. We get through. So how time flies? I was just seeing my photograph, uh, which they put, and black hair. And today I am here after five years as a national cyber security coordinator. So this is what the job does to you. <laughs> but uh, thanks to SHM uh, for inviting me here uh, on this very interesting and important subject of uh, global privacy and data protection. Uh, I'm told this event uh, is going to cover various uh, aspects of uh, data governance, data protection, privacy engineering, privacy by design, uh, privacy technology and privacy regulations. I was just taking my mind back uh, uh, to let's say about 30 years back when there used to be a telephone directory. Uh, subsequently the Tatas came and made a yellow pages out of it. But I remember if somebody's name and address and telephone number was not in that directory, he had to find it. He used to go to the Department of Telecom and tell him, why is my name and number not there in the directory? And today, if somebody gets my phone number and address and name, I say, well, how have you got this one? <laughs> that, that is the change that is taking place and very rightly so. I think uh, time has now come for all of us to understand the nuances of data protection. Uh, the government of India, as you are aware, is coming out with uh, three very major uh, bills. The Digital India Act, which is uh, expected to uh, supersede the IT Act of 2000 as amended in 2008. Uh, there is the Personal Data Protection Bill, which actually should have come out yesterday. I mean, it's been a very, very long story since the to Swami case and Sri Krishna Committee and Chris Kovala Krishna and all the amendments. And uh, of course, the minister has said it is going to be tabled in the monsoon session. And of course, the third is the telecom bill, uh, which, uh, if you believe it, is expected to uh, supersede the Telegraph Act of 1885. So, three important regulations. And uh, it's very important that uh, as a nation, I think we should start now uh, thinking about uh, you know, the importance of data. Last week, you were aware that Meta as a company was uh, fined 1.3 billion dollars by the EU under the GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulations, uh, for having uh, you know leaked some personal data of EU. A few years back, you remember that famous case of uh, Facebook being fined 5 billion dollars for the Cambridge Analytica case where 83 million IDs of the Americans was leaked. Uh, I think as a, as a nation we are losing money. And data, you call it the new oil, you, somebody called it the treasure the other day. This is only after you open the box, you come to know the value of it. And for those of you who surf the dark web, the amount of data that is being sold there and leaked is staggering. In all the ransomware cases, you heard of the double, triple extortion. Uh, first, of course, he puts a backdoor, then he takes away your data, then he encrypts it. And if you don't pay the ransom, he sells it on the dark web. So it's, it's a very dirty game taking place uh, out there uh, in the dark web. Uh, what I did was that, uh, I'm going to keep it short, I just went to the uh, net and uh, found out as to what Gartner is saying. And I'm going to quote Gartner, I don't work for them. But uh, what they are saying is that 75% of the global population will have its personal data covered under privacy regulations by 2024. So this is the next one year prediction that they are making that 75, three-fourths of our global population will have some sort of a regulation to cover our uh, personal data. They have also identified uh, five top trends in privacy. The first one is for uh, data localization. Uh, you are all aware as to how inclusive everything is becoming and uh, especially after the global geopolitics uh, that is splitting uh, the world today. You are aware of the two sides uh, that are being taken in most forums between the West and uh, this alliance uh, on the East. In fact, in the Ukraine war, I found a very interesting uh, term being used called the digital data embassies. Uh, the uh, government data of Ukraine has been shifted to another nation in the EU. 
as a sort of a redundancy, like what we have in terms of our data centers, we have a main and a uh, standby sort of thing somewhere else in another earthquake zone. But uh, what I find now is that nations have started this practice because data has become so important for governance to shift their standby data somewhere else in case of uh, cyber attacks or even you know, some physical sort of thing. Uh, the second, of course, aspect is uh, privacy enhancing computation techniques. And uh, Dr. Lamnish was just discussing with me that this is something that they are working in uh, Singapore about the use of, uh, you know, design techniques and especially in public cloud because a lot of data is now being hosted on the public cloud. So how do you protect uh, the data at uh, rest and in transit uh, in various forms? So various techniques are now being uh, dealt into. Third, of course, is the AI governance, and we, we've heard this today, uh, that many AI products are being used, so how do you ensure the privacy while uh, the, uh, whether it's generative or other forms of AI. Uh, then, of course, is the fourth point is the remote becomes hybrid everything. So, uh, once uh, post-COVID this work from home culture started, uh, the uh, enterprises are now very careful about uh, creating a zero trust architecture. So uh, verify everything, uh, trust nothing, and uh, whether it is actually the identity of the person who's there at the other end of that uh, endpoint, is it that person of my company? So uh, identity, uh, endpoint uh, aspects, the network, the application that he is using. So everything is today in a sense being monitored. So that is now breaching the aspects of privacy. So this is another area that they have highlighted and of course the last one is the centralized privacy uh, UX. Uh, I think uh, a friend from Amazon also mentioned uh, the centralized user experience. Uh, what he was trying to say is that for all your privacy settings, you now have just one site and you go to that and you make changes and then it is spread. So that, that is uh, one of the trends that uh, Gartner has highlighted. So. Uh, uh, what are the challenges? Challenges are the increased use of AI, the globalization of the economy, the increased number of cyber attacks, and the growing public awareness of uh, privacy issues. So uh, what, do, what does the industry have to do? Firstly, you have to be transparent about how you collect and use the uh, customer data. Uh, you have to give customers control over their personal data. You have to protect your customers' personal data from unauthorized access and you have to comply with the applicable privacy laws and regulations. Uh, this is all I have to say. Let me conclude by once again complimenting Ashton. And uh, we've had some excellent uh, talks today. And I'm sure these sessions are going to be uh, equally interesting. With that, uh, thank you very much. Jai Hind.